Over the past six months, I have spent some time with three Linux distros that all seem to share a similar goal, making gaming on Linux easier and better. Pika OS, Kashi OS, and Nobara. While their aspirations are comparable, the paths to get there are quite different. Each is built on a different base, for example. Pika OS is Debian-based, specifically Debian SID. Kashi OS builds on Arch, and Nobara comes from Fedora. So yeah, it's one of those pick-your-poison situations. Right now, I'm using Pika OS 4, so let's start there. So this is Pika OS running on my Lenovo Ryzen-powered laptop. I've added my usual GNOME tweaks, things like dash to dock and restoring the window controls GNOME keeps trying to take from us. And Pika OS actually has extension manager and GNOME tweaks already in place, which I thought was a nice touch. Installation was straightforward. A guided installer, welcome wizard, and everything set up pretty quickly. On first boot, Pika OS feels minimalist, but poke around a bit and you'll find a lot going on under the hood. The Welcome app, for example, offers a layout switcher that's very Zorin-like, letting you choose between traditional, Unity-style, and GNOME 2 looks. It ships with the latest GNOME 48, a 6.14 kernel patched with tweaks borrowed from Kashi OS, and despite being based on Debian's unstable branch, it's actually been very solid for me so far. Their Pikman Package Manager is another standout for me, it's designed to unify package management across systems, and it's been working well so far. Installing apps is as easy as Pikman install evolution, for example. In the interest of fairness, I should say that Linux Next did a one-month test, videos linked below, where he had problems following an update. He also mentioned some other minor gripes that seem to be directed more at Debian itself than at Pika OS in particular. The video is a few months old, but please check it out for your own peace of mind. Pika OS ships with GNOME by default. Kashi OS, by contrast, gives you more choice out of the box. GNOME, KDE, XFCE, LXQT, and more. That flexibility makes it ideal if you're picky about your desktop environment. Nobara Linux keeps it simple. GNOME and KDE, plus some neat variants like Steam HTPC for home theater PCs and Steam Handheld for devices like a Steam Deck. All three are tailored for gamers, and here's how they stack up. Pika OS includes a game utilities meta package. Steam, Litrus, Mango HUD, Wine, and others. It also includes a custom kernel and NVIDIA support right in the welcome app. Kashi OS comes with the Hello setup app, offering one-click install for Steam, Heroic Launcher, Lutris, etc. It's also built for performance with custom kernels and optimized packages for specific CPU architectures. Nabara has all the basics, but leads into content creation too, bundling OBS Studio, Blender, and Kden Live. Plus, it supports Proton GE and proprietary drivers, which is great for both gaming and media work. Pika OS offers a clean GNOME experience with some thoughtful UI tools and desktop layout options. Great for those who want minimal setup with maximum flexibility. Kashi OS. Performance is the name of the game. Custom kernels, pre-architecture builds, and wide desktop environment support. Nobara. Specialized editions and media tools make this one ideal for gamers who also stream, create, or use niche hardware. Honestly? It depends on what you need. Pika OS is great if you want a Debian base with gaming tools pre-installed and some GNOME flair. Kashi OS is for the power users who want cutting-edge everything and don't mind tinkering. Nobara is probably the all-rounder, works well, supports unique hardware setups, and comes ready for both gaming and creative work. For me, Pika OS has been a pleasant surprise. Smooth and stable and easy to live with, frankly. I like Kashi OS too. And Nobara left a good impression, although I think I tried it a while back, so memory's a bit fuzzy on Nobara. Are these beginner-friendly? Eh, not really. If you're starting out, you might want to look at something like Mint or Zorin, but if you're comfortable poking around a bit and want something tuned for gaming, these are solid choices. And most of them do have UI options to install the various packages they support. Let me know in the comments if you've tried any of these, especially Pika OS. 
Curious if others had the same experience as me or maybe preferred the older Ubuntu-based version. I've put links to more in-depth reviews of all three of these OSs below. So, you know, if you're interested, please take time to check those out. So that's another video in the can. If you found this informative or interesting, please consider liking and subscribing down below. And remember, be excellent to each other.